And a warm welcome to you from what is, I promise you, a very, very sunny day in Yokohama. A windy one as well, which may cause issues for the players. But, well, what about this Yokohama FC team? Bottom of the J-League, only three draws in this campaign, still waiting for their first victory. And, well, there is a chance that it may come today. They have to rediscover their goal scoring form they have to work out a way to defend properly 23 goals conceded in this j league season by some distance the worst defense in the j league and that has been at the root of their issues they're newly promoted they're struggling to adapt but can they do so today against the consadoli sapporo side who are in poor form as well. A two-all draw against the Vispa last time, a win in the League Cup before that, but just two J-League wins all season, underperforming yet again. And Mihailo Petrovic was under a little bit of pressure in his uh, pre-match interview, and he certainly hopes that they take advantage of what should be a big chance for them today. Well, the Yokohama players ready in the... Uh, Light blue on the right of the picture. We wait for the concert players to come through before they walk. Very well supported clubs, both of these clubs, but just hoping for a little bit more from their teams. And in a way, it's more forgivable, the form of Yokohama. As I mentioned, struggling to adapt to the top flight as they always have. Every other chance they've had at J-League, only once have they stayed up in a J-League campaign. For Consa, well, they've got a bit more experience. They returned to the top flight in 2017. They've been in mid-table since this, their seventh consecutive season since promotion. They really should be pushing just a little bit higher in the table. Well, there's our referee. Rio Tanimoto waiting to lead them out. Yokohama FC boosted massively by the return last time of their giant German goalkeeper Sven Brodersen. You can see him at the back of your picture there. And the thing about Shuhei Yamada's Yokohama FC is they can play really easy on the eye, open and attacking, like to get the ball wide, but they need to create more for Koki Ogawa, their star striker. And they need to tighten up defensively. Here they come. See that wind. And of course, any footballer will tell you that strong winds are just about the worst conditions in which to play. Let's hope they can adapt and cope with it. There's Saulo, who starts today. Brazilian uh, getting his chance from the start as Yamada just looks for the perfect foil for Koki Ogawa. Look at those away fans away in the distance. Concert so well supported. And in fact, their supporters might even outsing the home fans here. So we're ready. We can take a look at the team lineups in uh, just a moment's time. Can Yokohama use today to get their first J League win of this campaign? Nice touch to see the uh, youngsters out there with the players, but it's time for uh, the seniors to take over. Very pleasant before uh, kickoff here, but we can take a look at uh, both sides. Shuhei Yamada makes 
three changes as he looks for a change in form and fortune in this rather dispiriting campaign. Iwatake replaces Takuya Wada, the Brazilian duo of Yuri Lara and Saulo both play from the start. Caprini unavailable, Shion Inoue drops to the bench, but Koki Agawa is the key player for the home team. He'll play in behind Saulo Minero, but Agawa now three games without a goal, needs to rediscover his form here. Watch out too for the quality of Tomoki Kondo from out wide. Seventh J-League campaign of this season already for Ryo Tanemoto, the 42nd of his career. And there are the two captains, Takuma Arano on the right and Hirotaka Mita on the left. And there's the uh, VAR. Akihiko Ikeuchi in charge of that with Nayuya Akawa. And as always, we hope we won't uh, need recourse to that. Here's the concert team. Mihailo Petrovic makes two alterations to the side that drew with Avispa last time. Lucas Fernandez isn't available and is replaced by Toya Nakamura as Petrovic juggles his formation by moving Daiki Suga up the field. Further forward, Tsuyoshi Ogashiwa is included with Ryota Aoki dropping out. Now, Takuru Kaneko has scored three times this season and provided two assists, and he is the player of whom Yokohama should be most wary. So he'll play from wide on that right-hand side, Asano and Komai in behind, Ogashiwa. A bid from Petrovic to just try and create a bit more danger here. There's Shuhei Yamoda. I think he deals with the pressure pretty well, but it must be tough. And Petrovic clearly wants more from his side. The Austrian has cut a rather frustrated figure in recent weeks. Cut quite a frustrated figure before this game in his pre-match interview. So can Yokohama make things happen? Or will it be concert finding form? A team without a win in the J-League against one that's won only twice. Yokohama FC against Consadore Sapporo here in Yokohama. Both sides tend to provide uh, entertaining games. So whichever way it goes today, let's hope at least that we have that. Throw from Iwatake. Two sides who you know all about having defensive issues. That's uh, taken quickly and usefully for Saulo. He gets the break as well, tries to dig it in towards that far post. Early goal. Inside, 40 seconds. Yokohama in front, Tomoki Kondo taking advantage of some catastrophic defending. And what a start that is. The start they were desperate for. Now they will look at this. Was there a foul on the goalkeeper? Well, we'll see. Nothing wrong there. Awful bit of defending, and I think the goalkeeper just lets that slip. It's a big mistake, both defensively at the far post, and then from Sugeno, the goalkeeper. Kaneko, the danger man at the other end, the creator, creates the opening goal unwittingly for Yokohama. Poor decision-making anyway, and then it's really poor execution. The goalkeeper did get his hands on it. But I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Celebrations for Shuhei Yomoda. They are checking, and I can understand why, because the goalkeeper got both hands on the ball, but goal is given.
was one of those borderline ones, but the thing you always need to remember with VAR is it's there for a clear and obvious error. So the decision that's been made on the field does matter. Even in those technical infringement ones. Well, that's a lovely flick forward. Just trying to run in behind there was Yuya Asano, the new signing from Sanfrecci Hiroshima. What a moment for Tomoki Kondo, a first senior goal for him. And maybe a priceless one for Yokohama FC. Couldn't quite believe his luck, but one thing he does deserve great credit for is the fact that he was uh, alive to the opportunity. Petrovic is fuming down there. Here's Daiki Sugo with the throw. Great weapon that. It's not often that Yokohama FC have got something to hold on to. It's not even uh, Ogawa who got the goal. Brodersen, the German to clear it away, came back against Gamba Osaka last time. They need consistency from the player we just saw there, Yuri Lara. Well-travelled Brazilian. Rodderson to smash it clear. Oh, looked like it might have gone out of play there, but Konza have a chance to get onto the front foot. There's Nakamura. They have been working really hard on their defensive issues, Yokohama. Look for evidence of that, but they're giving it away here. Good darting run, and did just enough to shepherd it behind. But already there are warning signs here. Asano is getting plenty of joy running in behind. And he knows it too. for Consadoli Sapporo against Kashima and then FC Tokyo. Looking for an away win here against the, the worst team in the league statistically to try and uh, really kickstart their season. Very, very inconsistent. Tanaka. Ruled by Arano, but through that goes to Sven Brodersen. Akito Fukumori cross to take it. He has 276th appearance in the league today for concert. Long standing servant to the club, great quality as well in that left foot. Seven in and around that penalty area. It's a really good ball in. They got 
The player free, Takuma Arano at the far post. And he couldn't take advantage. Should be 1-1. Just onside, held his run in time and just flicked it wide. No convincing contact. Intriguing to watch, isn't it, with Yokohama FC? Because you come into the game knowing how poorly they defended this season. They grab the early lead, but you can see all the defensive issues writ large and clearly haven't sorted them out. They're going to need a fair slice of luck here, certainly to win this game 1 0, maybe to win it at all. Tanaka, again a chance for them to get in behind, options here in the middle, fairly desperate challenge, times two there and they think there was a foul. And Yuri Lara thinks, well you can see what he thinks, let's have a look at this. Just about okay and I'm not sure there's too much in that, just that right foot and whether or not it made contact but Lara pleading his case. He felt Ogashiwa went over far too easily and they're not even checking it. He had a brief look. It's going to be Fukumori. We've already seen one excellent delivery from him. Should have led to a goal. Dipped it towards that far post and just over the head of Shunta Tanaka. Scored already in this campaign in the J-League and indeed in the League Cup, getting forward from those set pieces. He'll be hopeful here, frustrated, but hopeful. As will they, the marvellous travelling fans of concert. Best ever finish in the J-League. Finished fourth in 2018. A bit too much mediocrity, but they dream that one day they can crack it. There's Asano. Now Tanaka. Safety first from Yuri Lara. Now maybe Yokohama can break. Yamashita. Two really good, strong running wingers, and Yamashita's won it back. It's another defensive nightmare for Konsa. And Yokohama should have taken advantage for the second time, blocked behind for a corner. Let's watch this again. No foul there. Okamura needed to be stronger. Yamashita probably should have taken advantage. that left-hand side, Kondo down the right. Hirotaka Mita. Take this out, swinging corner. See, Unduko scored last week, is one of the threats here. Over the head of Ogawa.
Fondo can't find a way through. There's Asano. up by Mita. Here he is again. A couple of options there in the middle. One of them was a Gower. Now it falls here. But Koki Ogawa goes down. Looked a penalty to me. They'll certainly be looking at that. Or did he just go down a bit easily? Well, there's a challenge came in and a Gower went over. Yeah, they're gonna just hold things because the ball's in a non-threatening area. Let's just see what the refereeing team makes of this. Let's watch it again. Well, the leg is certainly poked out. Agao went over it. This is the angle that will tell us more. Was there a hand there, maybe? Well, it's a foul, all right. It's a clear penalty. It's whether there was anything wrong before that. I just wonder if they uh, saw the use of a hand. The focus is on the referee. Gow is making his point. You can hear the voices there of the Consadoli Sapporo uh, supporters. They'll certainly be quite relieved here. There's still a conversation, but not for long. I can't quite believe that. I can only think that the uh, VAR official saw a hand in the, the build-up to all of that. Now then, there's a flashpoint. Over there, near the edge of the penalty area, there was definitely a push, and there might be trouble here. For Consadoli Sapporo, I don't quite know what started it, but the referee needs to take control here. The captain, Hirotaka Mita, the player who was shoved to the ground. How bad was the contact? Have another look. There's the incident. Well, it's only a push, isn't it? It's a yellow card rather than a red one. See it there in the background. It's not smart at all, though, from Takuma Arano. Really poor example from the captain. That was captain on captain. We saw them smiling at the start of the game. Well, they're checking this, but they didn't check the uh, the penalty. There you go. They are still looking at that, but there's no contact to the face. It's the only thing is it's a fairly violent push, and that's sometimes what officials look at and don't like. I would say it's this side of the line and it's a yellow. And it's certainly not a clear and obvious error not to send him off, but they are still having the conversation. And if they ask him to look at this, I think Arano's in trouble. Still they wait. Big, big moment in the game, this. 
think they'll be discussing where the contact was and how violent it was, what he saw and what he's being helped with. That's the process. So Mita's getting a calm down lecture and Arano as well. We need to get on with the game here. It's taking far too long, this. Looks like the check is over. No penalty at one end, no red card or even a yellow, I think, for a run-up. I'm afraid this is all a little baffling for the last three or four minutes. We're going to continue. And after all of that, it's 11 against 11, and Yokohama FC lead by a goal to nil, as they have done since the 38th second of the game. And they've fallen asleep here defensively again. They've given it away. It feels like only a matter of time. It's going to be a Yokohama FC free kick. Gives everyone a chance to calm down. Mita down again. He's not had a great two or three minutes. And going back over the last five or six minutes or so, just to clarify for what it's worth from where I'm sitting, Arano certainly shouldn't have been sent off, so that's right. He should have been booked, though. And in terms of the penalty, if there was nothing else, if there was no handball or something in the build-up that we missed, well, it's a clear penalty, isn't it? Uh, I just wondered in that little moment before Agao went over, was there a hand from the Yokohama player in the challenge? It's the only thing I can think that stops it being a penalty, but only the officials know. And the one thing you would say, we didn't see the referee tap his hand and gesture to the Yokohama players, as you often do, so that will be a mystery until after the game, but nothing we can do now. And it's 1-0 with, doubtless, a fair amount of added time at the end of this first half now. Daiki Suga with the throw. He's done a good job so far, Suga, of pushing uh, Kondo back. He loves to get forward, but he's had a lot of defending to do. In towards uh, Lara with a little touch, and it's a chance again for Yokohama. Lovely bit of play in the build-up. Just reverse that so cleverly. Yamashita couldn't take advantage. Look at this from Yuri Lara. Really smart. And it almost turned into an assist. It was uh, sliced so badly. It's been full of incident. Not all of it particularly edifying, but incident nonetheless. Kondo, the goal scorer, with that throw. It's ironic, really, that he does so much good work chasing down the right-hand side that his goal didn't come that way. Came over on the other side of the field after a poor attempted defensive clearance. Popped up on the edge of the six-yard box to score. He's taking the throw now. As Yokohama looked to build on the early lead. Climb from Yuri Lara. Oh, and he's won the free kick. The referee didn't like the challenge. This is a great position. Once again, at the heart of everything is the concert captain, Takuma Arano. He 
Lara jumped cleanly, I have to say. I, I thought Arano did as well. I think they're a bit unlucky there. going well so far for his side desperate for that win of course desperate for some sense of momentum must have landed awkwardly yuri lara maybe jarred something but looks like he's going to be okay Looks a bit shaken, doesn't he? He would have been one of the candidates to take this free kick. Salo there as well. Looks like the captain, Hirataka Mita, is going to take responsibility. The only other player there is inevitably Ogawa. Maybe they're trying to tee it up for the centre forward, Sigeno having made that error that led to the goal, can't afford any others, the goalkeeper's position at Concer is a, a debatable one, contentious one. Well, isn't this a very modern wall? Two on their knees, we've got the worm in behind. Three in front now. Saulo just having a stroll around the foundations. Will it lead to anything? As a cynic in you would say, it often doesn't. Ogao has moved away. So through this crowd, it will be Hirataka Mita! Good strike. And Sugeno should make that save. It's on his side of the wall, but he still does well to move his feet and get across. It's not quite as dramatically good a save as he made it look. It's going in the corner, but he's got a lot of time to get across and palm that around the post. And as I said, it's his side of the goal. But it's still a good stop. anything from the corner well the old phrase know your distance blazed it way over from getting on for 40 yards out that they got really lucky there Yokohama that was a poor defensive header almost served as a, a flick on for Yuya Asano from Hayashi It's late over on the far side. He's going to lose patience soon, this referee. And that's going to be another message to calm down, and at least it's consistent. He's in a strange way, having uh, not booked Asano, he sort of uh, set the tone for the rest of the game, in the same way if you do book a player early, you end up booking plenty more, it can work both ways. It's Komai. Now Daiki Suga. looking edgy and a bit panicky having taken the lead Yokohama has settled a bit formed in uh, late 1998 Yokohama FC they came from 
the Yokohama Flugels, the old club that merged with the Yokohama Marinos, and the, uh, the fans didn't like the new identity. They kept the Flugels going as Yokohama FC. It means that that particular derby is rather more uh, poignant than some others. Almost a new club against the ashes of that club, but uh, it means an awful lot to Yokohama FC. They lost it 5-0 three weeks ago. First Japanese club to be owned and run by fans as well. Yokohama FC, the Socios model. The first ever manager of Yokohama FC as the new club was one of the great entertainers of old, Pierre Litvarski. If you are one of our younger viewers, look him up online, it's worth 10 minutes of your time. For the talent, the hairstyle, the look, the lot, really. Here's Yamashita, running away from Arano, but not able to do anything uh, with it, ultimately. Saulo, you see him backing in straight away there, trying to make his presence felt. Fukumura. Now Fukumori. It's Komai. See uh, Yokohama FC with uh, just a little bit more of the possession, 55 to 45. into the opening half hour here. Goal after 38 seconds, we could and probably should have had a penalty, maybe could have had a red card, we had a check for it. A couple of chances as well for Konsa, another very good chance for Yokohama FC, but it is 1-0. Forward by the goal scorer Kondo, asking too much of Yuri Lima. out of the picture here, but we'll soon arrive to deliver this. Gets great distance. Yamashita. Yuri Lara leaning back. He likes the positivity from his team. Yuri Lara is playing for his ninth club. He previously played at J League 2 for Toshigi. Came from Vasco da Gama this season. I would say politely that he owes them to be a bit fitter than he looks. Giving him a contract and uh, giving him the chance to play in the J-League. He's obviously got great skill and he's contributed two or three excellent touches here and played OK in the campaign, but he's not been very mobile and we've seen him already 
Just over half an hour in, puffing and blowing. Comparing to Saulo, his countryman, has done all sorts of chasing, closing down. Has he finally run out of patience? No, I think it's going to be another warning here. This time for Kyohei Yoshino. And that's late. And in certainly some other games would be a yellow card, maybe not most, but uh, this referee is particularly lenient. isn't it how some referees seem to set out to be lenient and others maybe have the opposite view and really it should be uh, about applying the laws without wanting to sound too po-faced about it well they're looking for an equalizing goal Daiki Suga their pocket rocket from that left hand side is going to step up and take this a long way out. He almost looks like he fancies it here. Well, if he's going to go for goal here, hang on to your hats. This could be dramatic. It's the long run up from Suga. It's not a bad strike either. Importantly for Yokohama FC, it was blocked away. I reckon that was goal bound does highlight how hard it is to score from there. You've got to go through the crowd as well as pick out the top corner. Yep, it is goal bound, but I think Brodison's right behind. It was a brave defensive header. Scored uh, once in this campaign, Daiki Suga. Ten goals in all for concert. When Kondo scored after 38 seconds, didn't expect it to still be 1 0. 10 minutes before half time, but that's where we are. Well, it's drifted in by Fukumori, and again, they got a player free around the back, but just drifted over his head. Look at that, the run from deep, really nicely timed, and they're a bit unlucky there. Great quality from Fukumori to almost pick out that run. On clearance by Sven Brodersen. Saulo is going to be penalised here. Yet another player is on a warning now. Here's the challenge. Just leans in to uh, Nakamura. work from Yamashita. It's funny, you think of Yamashita and Kondo as the two wide players who can cause problems for the opposition. Yamashita's had a really influential game. Kondo's the one who's got the goal. Finally, he is going to produce the card. And you have to say it's for the player who deserves it. More than anyone out there, Takuma Arano. But the irony is, 
He isn't booked for that challenge, the, the red card check. He isn't booked for one or two others. He's booked for uh, the technical infringement. And he's out next week as well against Kashima. That's a blow. The captain will be missing, but I'm afraid that's uh, his ill discipline. More pertinently, in this context, given natural aggression of his game, it's going to be a fairly uh, thin tightrope that he's walking for the rest of the 90 minutes. for Yuya Asano, he's done really well. He's going to go for the goal himself, and he's going to pick out the bottom corner. That's a thrilling finish. He hit it so sweetly, and they have the equalising goal that they deserve. High quality, although it did come from a Yokohama FC error. They gave it away in the wrong area. And really, Nduka should be dealing with that, but the slip opened things up. And this is a great angle to see the finish from. Nothing the goalkeeper can do, Brodersen. So much for Asano still to do. It's an excellent hit. Dipped as well in flight his fourth of the campaign. Gonzalo left his foot in on the goalkeeper there. Has to be a card for him as well. He was on a warning and really make that challenge, can you, on the, the opposition goalkeeper? Could have pulled out, and he didn't. I'm not sure Sugeno helped him too much there. But, uh, on balance, he deserves the yellow as well. Takuma Asano from the uh, the World Cup. His younger brother Yuya making an impact on this game. The talent he is. It's Tanaka. Now Suga. Buzzing here, Concer, and they've won themselves a corner. The game suddenly has a different complexion. Yokohama FC never looked likely to keep a clean sheet, and it has come to pass. Fukumori forward to take. Turn it round completely. Went short, it was always on here for Suga. Given the quality of that left foot of Suga from range, I think you have to do a bit better in terms of closing him down. That was on all day, that pass. Fukumori. 
Oh, it's a really poor defensive effort from Zaolo. And he got away with one there. Ricocheted off him and grabbed gratefully by Broderson. That's for Kumori. He's nudged over there as he tried to play it forward. Something in the build up, maybe use of the hand, was it? Suddenly, Mihailo Petrovic's side believe they can turn this round and take control, and that's what they're gradually doing. They do have real ability. A bit stunned by falling behind so early, it's taken them a while to get going. Kondo's throw, touch from Saulo. Good play from Gashiwa. So again, the referee's letting this go. It's Konsa who come out on top of it. Harmony need half time to come quickly here, but it's not going to because I'd imagine there's going to be a fair amount of added time after all the nonsense we had, the checks for this and that. Five added minutes. Just about right, I think. So plenty of time for Consadole Sapporo to make the most of this momentum. Another corner. Sana with another chance to deliver some quality. See how fiercely the wind is whipping as well as he. Uh, Flew that corner in. Now Suga. Looked like a foul. Looked like maybe another there, but play continuing. That's another excellent effort, and it's turned home. And they have turned it round. And it's Tsuyoshi Ogashiwa. Yokohama just couldn't hold on. Concert go from one down to two one up in the space of six minutes. Goes down as a mistake by the goalkeeper because even if he can't hold it here, Broderson, he has to do better than that. It's Asano again, though, with that quality on the left foot. He got it to dip awkwardly in front of the big German and he couldn't push it away from goal. moment for them and I'm afraid this nightmare season for Yokohama FC just continues third of the season for Tsuyoshi Ogashiwa Sana with the assist What a good 
good signing. Yuya Asano looks from San Frecce. There's Komai. There's Suga. Okamura. Yamada must have uh, sensed the way things were going. Half time would come quickly, but these five added minutes always looked like being a, a nightmare for Yokohama FC. No question which side is going to head into the second half with all of the momentum here. Way by Broderson. towards the end of this first half. It's certainly been dramatic, certainly been entertaining. Both goalkeepers have made errors, referee's been busy, but it's Consadoli Sapporo who go in with the advantage. It was Kondo who gave Yokohama FC the very early lead, 38 seconds in, but then that man Asano with a terrific finish after the error from Nduka to make it 1-1, and then Shiyoshi Ogashiwa with a finish from close range after Broderson spilt it. And that means that Concert go in with the advantage, having trailed for so much of that first half. Yokohama will need to find something. The start of the second half and start well as they did in the first, because at half-time, it's Yokohama FC 1, Hokkaido Consadori Sapporo 2.
And welcome back to Yokohama, where at halftime, Consadoli Sapporo lead here by two goals to one, having trailed by a goal to nil 38 seconds in, scored by Tomoki Kondo, but a really good hit from Yuya Asano, driven hard and low into the uh, bottom corner, and then uh, a tap in really for Toyoshi Ogashiwa from. A Yuya Asano shot that was spilled by Sven Brodersen. And it means that once again, Yokohama FC have uh, a job on their hands. Remember the home side, bottom of the J-League. Three adrift of Kashiwa Reysol. You do not want to fall too far behind or else it could turn into a, a very, very long season. These home games against teams who aren't quite down around them, but not far away from them. Absolutely key. Well, we're all set. And then we have the ball as well, and we can get things back underway. All sorts of drama and controversy in that uh, first half. Let's see if uh, the second can match it. So Consadoli Sapporo leading Yokohama FC by two goals to one here in Yokohama. Straight away, Takuma Arado, the captain goes down. He is a combative figure in that midfield, that is for sure. Leads the team well. Plays pretty close to the line as well, I would say. Kito Fukumori to take this free kick. See really good quality from him from corners and free kicks so far. That one wasn't a bad idea either, but it's grabbed by Sven Brodersen, who they were waiting really to back from his injury and yet it's not been great today maybe allow him to get back into the rhythm of things the goalkeeper position is definitely an issue but here they are at the other end of the field stolen away though by Nakamura here's Kaneko haven't seen much of him so far Rana wanted it played Kaneko decides to go on his own and doesn't win the free kick. Now Kondo. Play by Okamura. When they did restart things, when the Flugels had finished, the blue ribbon movement kept the Flugels going and they became Yokohama FC. They had to start in JFL. They won that twice. They went into J League 2 then in 2001. It was quite a story. Finally promoted to the J League in 06 and relegated straight away. Back up and down and up again in this their fourth season. In the J League, finished second in the J2 League. 
to Albirex in that last campaign. That was enough. Interesting to see Ken Eko already involved a couple of times down the right for Consadole in this second half. He was the player you would have picked out before the game. He's uh, one of the chief creative influences, even from that right wing back position. But, uh, really seen too much of the ball so far, but that's clearly changing. Here is the key player, Yuya Asano, offside. Sugeno. Asano. Given away by Arano, and he slides in to win it, and he's lucky he did win it. On a yellow card, the captain. Gashiwa, his goal has them in front at the moment. Komai. Nearly got free, and then the follow-up dragged well wide. Ogashiwa just couldn't leap up and reach it. Once again, though, those worrying defensive holes from a Yokohama FC point of view. Petrovic will be a little bit happier with life at the moment, maybe on their way to a third J-League win of the campaign. on by Saulu and it opens things up and that's a chance for Kondo having scored a first senior goal early on in this game he wasn't too far away from a second it's good play from Saulo who was caught as he uh, just flicked it forward Kumori. Feels like there are wide open spaces to exploit here. Kaneko to roll it forward. He's available again. Who's down? Arano. Now Komai. Here's Arano again, who's just starting to dominate a bit. on the way through and the Yokohama FC throw you could see Yamashita spotted that straight away in fact uh, I'm gonna leave it I think to Yuri Lara in fact it wasn't their throw after all to 
Walsh there on Hirotaka Mita. He's played all but five minutes of this Yokohama FC season. So far to this point, the captain. Yoshino. There's Lara. Yamashita will uh, try and make something of it, but just drifts behind. Duka's slip that led Yuya Asano in for the, uh, the equalising goal. Asano needed to be careful as well. Only booked for sliding in on the goalkeeper, and that time he pulled out just in time. This might be an opportunity over the head of Salo. A better played cross, and they could have been in there. Mita. It's another good idea, but just over the head of Yuri Lara. There's Nakamura. Very slow start to the last campaign concert. Didn't win for the first eight weeks of the season. Ended up finishing 10th, which uh, was a good effort, although it was a slightly false position. They were relegation threatened for much of that campaign, and they won five of their last eight. And a very fortunate win against Cerezo Osaka, which was a real turning point. There with both captains. Just explaining what the brief delay is about here. In the meantime, issues for that man, Shuhei Yamada. Can't believe it's about checking something. I think it might be about the, uh, the technology, just making sure it's working. Anyway, we can get back underway. have been pretty good at is scoring goals. Didn't score on match day one and he went on a good scoring run, if not a defensive one. And they broke their duck again against Gamba last time, scored again here, but they've just shown that they can't keep teams out. And it's not as if Concer have scored two lucky goals or anything, they've both been been coming. Isn't it to have feel like proper atmospheres again at uh, J League game songs and chants allowed again this season? Feeling that uh, atmospheres back to where they were in 2019, glorious season when all the attendance records were broken, and of course, then the pandemic hit. Here's Saulo, chance for him to run in behind. Can he take it off the crossbar? And the follow-up was going wide anyway, but it's grabbed by Sugeno to tip onto the bar that from Takanori Sugeno, but he's unlucky, Saulo. Well, 
that's a cynical trip. Has to be a yellow card for uh, Hayashi. Third yellow card of the game. Pull back and then it's a kick, you know. It's borderline that. It's a really poor challenge. Now here attacker Mita. Opens up again here for Concer. It's all one touch. It's a terrific goal. And they're taking it away here from Yokohama FC. And this is a superstar display by Yuya Asano. It's just a glorious goal. All one touch passing. And then a really controlled measured finish and they have clear daylight here watch this again There's nothing spectacular about the beginnings but it's so well done passes all linked together really smart play Masano there to sweep it home Final pass, an excellent one from Daiki Suga, just measured it, just weighted it. And I'm afraid, once again, the game is getting away here from Yokohama FC. Took a slight nick on the way through, but if anything, that took it closer to the goalkeeper. And all smiles at Hokkaido Consadoli Sapporo. Yuya Asano is on a hat trick. Change for the home side, Keijiro Ogawa on. Former Vissel Kobe player making his second substitute appearance of the season. Shion Inoue's on as well. Yamashita has run his heart out down the left hand side. Uh, Lara, the other player, coming off, and the goalkeepers. In a strange position there, and he did the right thing, Broderson. Just uh, sliced it away. Well, so much hope when Yokohama FC led early on, and they may yet we hope if they can score the next goal in this game, but it just feels like a long way back now. Look at this, they're turning on the style, Kaneko, it's another beautifully picked pass, and this time, Broderson is out to make an excellent save. Ogashiwa denied, but look at this, they're so open here, Yokohama FC. That's a very good stop by Broderson. Used his size there off his line quickly. Nagashiwa just couldn't find the angle on the finish. Already scored one, he was looking for his second as well. That will give uh, Broderson a bit of confidence after slightly shaky first half. Oh, 
Fuku Mori to take this corner. Lined up there at the far post. Only they, they broke, and uh, Okamura headed it wide. Has scored once in uh, this campaign, in that 4-3 uh, defeat by Kawasaki Frontale. is picked up here by Kondo, and Kondo to roll it across. Well, there was the chance. Shion Inoue, they have had their moments. 2-1, of course, they hit the crossbar, the ball. Touched up and onto the bar by the goalkeeper, Sugeno. So, as I said, if Yokohama FC could score the next goal, who knows, but they're taking risks to try and get back into this, and it leaves them vulnerable at the other end. Bonifaz and Duca. Played by Sugeno, only making his uh, third start of the season. Both these sides with their goalkeeping issues in this campaign. There's Arano. Salo is starting to look very tired. Coming for the uh, visitors, Taika Nakashima, the young striker, will be introduced. Making his eighth substitute appearance of the season. He's had uh, a few injury issues even at this uh, early part of his career. So it's, uh, it's good to see him having a run, albeit as a sub. change coming, Kobayashi's also uh, being thrown on. Ogashiwa very close to grabbing his second, but he makes way and so too does the hero, Yuya Asano. That's a brave call from the coach, Petrovic. Two most threatening players being withdrawn, but what a performance from Yuya Asano. Two goals and the assist as well. Kaneko behind for a corner for Konsa.
Fletcher and Fukumori. To aim this in, presumably, to that far post where they're all gathered. That's exactly where it goes, and it got the touch from the young substitute, Nakashima. And then following up was Arado. since conceding the third, had a great chance at 2-1 as well. Feels as if the solution isn't that far away, but it has to start with the way they defend and the way they concentrate. He's looking over, hopefully, there, Saulo. Toi Yamane, Sho Ito, the two players coming on here. Direct replacement for him. Osalo owes them nothing. He's uh, done plenty of running here. He's given them 70 good minutes. Very nearly scored an equaliser. His uh, second appearance of the season. Final 20 minutes, Yokohama FC need, well, at least two. Kaneko. Kobayashi. Here's Komai. a really smart flick on, there's far too much time, and in fact, Arano had so much time that he took too long. I think if he felt he had to hit that first time, he probably would have scored, but he took an absolute age over that. Broderson. Thick and fast now, aren't they? Hiroki Miyazawa to make his 460th appearance for Consadole Sapporo. The 33 year old replacing Yoshiaki Komai. Been at the club since 2008, Miyazawa. And he is the, uh, the club captain. chance for the youngster Nakashima to chase. Suga. 
Still going here, Daiki Suga, and he goes over, but it's behind uh, for a corner. Good work, the journey. What a day for them, having fallen behind so early as well. This right in front of those Consa fans. Effortlessly in towards that far post, and eventually they can hammer it clear. Looking tired here, Yokohama FC. That's been a theme in this campaign as well so far. can allow that to run behind. Gower brought on down that left-hand side. Hasn't yet really been able to make an impact. Save from Sugeno at 2-1. Salo's shot was flicked up and onto the bar. Looks a very important one at the moment. Still, the job is not yet done. there as he tried to clear that away. And what do you do if you're him? You have to get them organised. You maybe have to rethink your footballing philosophy a bit because he likes to play this Open, entertaining football. And it does make for entertaining games, but they don't seem to win any of them. Van Duca. I would also uh, just think about it's either their fitness or the game management, but they do tire badly in the last 20 minutes of games, even half hour, Yokohama FC. It's, uh, it's been noticeable in this campaign, whether that's adapting from J2 League up to J League. They brought in a few new players. There's something wrong with nutrition or training, I don't know, but it's certainly been a thing. Been able 
able to bring uh, Pukiagawa into the game enough. Remember, they have a striker who scored 26 goals in J2 League last season. Ten more than the next best. But it's so hard for him. He scored five times in this campaign, but to get consistent opportunities, it's not easy. giveaway towards uh, the veteran Miyazawa now Fukumori are they in the mood to add a fourth Only half away by Nduka Sapporo goal, another change coming for Yokohama FC, Takumi Nakamura. The right back is going to come on. the free kick there challenged by Takuro Kaneko and here comes that Yokohama FC change Katsuya Iwatake one of those brought into the side today makes way and it is uh, Takumi Nakamura he did uh, score in the J League Cup against Nagoya Grand Passade back at the start of April his first senior goal and we saw Tomoki Kondo score his today, and it set Yokohama FC on their way, but uh, they've been uh, overtaken since. Sugeno under a little bit of pressure, but he does well to get it clear. done could yet be a little bit of hope if they could grab a goal back here they could set up a big finish remember the one thing about Yokohama FC is that they do have goals in them here comes the corner wasn't well defended and it's a chance but Keijiro Agawa just slashes at that. No control at all. That needed a, a smart finish, a well-placed finish. Instead of that, he just uh, thrashed it high and wide. And that might be the last chance. 
could make more of moments like this, it might be a different story. Cleared by Sugeno. There's Nakamura. There's a defensive risk. A slightly casual flick there by Shunta Tanaka. He got away with it. But uh, one or two of these little moments have just fallen Yokohama FC's way. Could have had a different outcome. We may yet, but the clock is now against them. Another defeat, almost certainly now. it on for Suga. Well, to Kuma Arano, might at times not be the most likeable player in terms of the way he approaches it, but my goodness me, he's dominated this game. Perfectly likeable off the field, by the way, but he's got an edge to him out there, but he's been the outstanding player. In terms of control, of course, Yuya Asano. In terms of the moments that mattered, the two goals and the assist for Ogashiwa. Rano just feel has had the game in his pocket. Changes these now, really. Say Ababa will replace the uh, set piece specialist Fukumori. Another of those who's been with the club for a long time, great servant, last eight seasons. Now, the new player, Baba, making his eighth substitute appearance. for the national side through under 17s, 18s and 20s and so he hopes to make that next step. Shima, the young striker who's come on, of course, goals need to be a thing. Scored two last season, none in this campaign. And he might be one of those players who chases hard and is big and strong and wins headers but doesn't actually score that many, but there's a lot to like about him. Raw boned and uh, puts himself about.
football matches are about moments and seizing the ones that matter. That's what Consadole Sapporo have done. They've been the better side as well. They deserve to be in front. But it's the moments they've grabbed a hold of. Here's Kaneko. Nakashima just ran out of room. Stops running, does he? Tafuro uh, can echo down that right hand side. Was oh, he caught by a stray arm? Feels like a Gao is the one testing his innocence. Yeah, he's involved. Just the fingers caught him in the face. Nothing more than that, but of course, you caught him in the eyes, then it's very, very painful. But it wasn't deliberate by Koki Ogawa. They will march on to those two home games and hope that this is the day that their season started to really gather momentum. Four added minutes after five at the end of the first half. They proved hugely important though. Ogashiro with that second concert goal and if they hadn't been able to add that then it could have worked out differently. Yokohama could have regrouped at half-time and taken confidence from the fact they were level and gone on to win the game, but it hasn't happened like that. by Nakamura. with real confidence now, looking to add a fourth. Takoro Kaneko. Excellent second half, and then it's rolled into the centre, it should have been four, it may yet be four, and it is. Shunta Tanaka with his second in the campaign. And that rounds off an outstanding display from Consadole Sapporo. This is the kind of day they've been waiting for, but I'm afraid it just piles the pain on Yokohama FC. They weren't able to clear, and in the end, it's really a tap-in for Tanaka. And there's so much for the newly promoted team to work on, and do they have time? We'll just check that for potential offside in the build-up. I think he's OK, but wondered if Miyazawa might have run off there. Nothing wrong with the, the last bit. No, it's all fine. 
Goal stands as we move into the final minute, probably plus 30 seconds of the four added minutes. Here's Arano. Suga. Now Kaneko. Dancing feet there from Hayashi. Baba. And that will do it for Consadole Sapporo. They trailed. But the revival led by that player, Yuya Asano. Kondo gave Yokohama FC the lead, 38 seconds into a dramatic first half. Asano with an outstanding equaliser six minutes before half-time, and then Olga Shiwa from an Asano assist made it 2-1 on the stroke of half-time. Then Asano got his second. Brodersen did not have his best day. That came on the hour, and then Tanaka rounding it all off for Consadole. Smile then for Mihailo Petrovic. We'll hope that the revival starts here for his side. But for poor Yokohama FC and Shuhei Yamoda, well, it's back to the drawing board again, isn't it? And he needs to start finding a way to win games, not just play well, but win games. That's where they're falling short and where Consadole Sapporo have come good for the third time this season. It finishes Yokohama FC 1, Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo 4. So, a really good win away from home for Petrovic's side. It was good to see him smiling after, well, snarling a bit before the game. So they back up that win against Yokohama Marinos on match day two and the 3-2 at Cerezo, both of which are results that show how good they can be. This is a win they would have expected to get, but those others, really impressive. And Yokohama FC don't play well enough for long enough in games. Little patches of 25 minutes, 30 minutes, they're outstanding. And uh, at other times, well, they seem to lose concentration and fall apart. I think some of it is the levels, is moving up from J2 League into J League. You can't make the same kind of mistakes. But, uh, yeah, Petrovic has a word as well with his captain. Let's here from one of the stars. ありがとうございます。まず、ワンゴール目ですけど、ミスを見逃さず、そしてシュートも落ち着いていましたね。そうですね。まあ、あのディフェンスの人も多分駆け引きでスペースを消してきたんですけど、まあ、やっぱり振